everyone. Uh, today we will discuss the morphology of the permanent mandibular first molar. So the permanent mandibular molars are three in number on each side of the mandible or each quadrant, first, second and third molar. The mandibular molars, these molars perform the major function of grinding. The crowns of the molars are shorter cervical occlusally, so cervical cervical occlusally. So these molars are shorter cervical occlusally. If you compare it with the interior teeth, or even if you compare it with the premolars, so these molars they are shorter cervical occlusally. The mandibular first molar, this is the mandibular first molar, this molar erupts into the oral cavity at the age of six to seven years. And the root completion is at around the age of 9 to 10 years. The first molar is the largest tooth in the mandibular arch. So this is the first model of the first mandibular first molar. This is the right mandibular first molar. And this is the left, this is the left mandibular first molar. So the mandibular first molar, it is the largest tooth in the mandibular arch and this tooth has five well-developed curves, one, two, three, four, and five. And this tooth has two well-developed root. This is one root and this is another root. So the, uh, there are two well-developed roots. the buccal aspect all five cusps are visible from the buccal aspect this is the mesio buccal cusp this cusp is the distal buccal cusp and this cusp is the distal cusp while in the background you can see the tips of the two cusps this cusp is the mesiolingual cusp and this cusp is the distolingual cusp there are two developmental grooves on the buccal side this one is the mesio buccal developmental groove and the second groove here this groove is the distro buccal developmental groove the mesio buccal cusp is usually the widest cusp mesio distally these two cusps the mesio buccal and the distro buccal cusp they make up the major portion of the buccal surface the distal cusp is sharper Although smaller but sharper as compared to the mesiobuccal and the distrobuccal cusp. The cervical line is regular or cemento enamel junction is regular in outline, but there's a sharp dip towards the root bifurcation. The two roots, there are two roots. This one is the mesial root and this is the distal root. And the bifurcation is around is about two to three millimeter below the cemento enamel junction. So two to three millimeter below the cemento enamel junction, there's bifurcation into a mesial root and into a distal root. From the lingual aspect, three cusps are visible. This is the mesiolingual cusp. That is the largest cusp from the lingual aspect. This one is the distolingual cusp and you can also see the part of the distal cusp from the lingual aspect. The mesiolingual cusp tip is higher as compared to the distolingual cusp. In between the two lingual cusp, you can see a developmental groove. This is the groove is known as the lingual developmental groove. The mesiodistal diameter, this is the mesiodistal diameter, it is comparatively, it is less as if you compare it with the buccal aspect. From the mesial aspect, only two cusps are visible. This one is the mesiobuccal cusp and this cusp is the mesiolingual cusp. This ridge is is the mesial marginal ridge. The buccolingual dimension from the mesial aspect is greater if you compare it with the distal aspect. The buccal outline of the tooth is more convex if you compare it with the lingual aspect which is the lingual outline is comparatively straight. 
the vertical line curves slightly towards the occlusal surface. The crown is shorter cervico-occlusally and also buccolingually. So you can see the ca all cast tips, all five cast tips from the, from the distal aspect. Additionally, as the crown is shorter buccolingually, so you can see part of the buccal surface from the distal aspect. You can see this developmental groove uh, that is known as the distobuccal developmental groove. The cervical line, it extends straight from the buccal surface to the lingual surface. You can see the lingual border of the mesial root from the distal aspect. From the occlusal aspect, the permanent mandibular first molar is wider mesiodistally. So it is wider mesiodistally if you compare it with the buccolingual dimension. The buccolingual dimension is greater on the mesial side as compared to the buccolingual dimension of the distal side. Greater part of the buccal surface is visible from the occlusal aspect as compared to the lingual aspect. There is a major fossa that is called a central fossa. Additionally, there are two other fossa. This is known as the mesial triangular fossa and this is smaller fossa is known as the distal triangular fossa that is very small. There are two, there, there's a major developmental groove and this groove is known as the central developmental groove. From the central developmental grooves, there are three main grooves. This groove is the mesiobuccal developmental groove. This groove is the distobuccal developmental groove and this groove is known as the lingual developmental groove. Additionally, there are some small supplementary grooves as well.